Now we are going to learn how to make a GET request through JavaScript. A GET request is used through the Fetch API, and basically it's how you get files, for example, HTML files, JavaScript files, CSS files, etc. Um, it's used for like querying things. It's used for all sorts of things. Basically, it, it, you can do whatever you want. You can use it however you'd please. Um, but generally, it's used for files and um, like what you see on the page, like CSS, JavaScript, and uh, HTML. Although, again, you can do it for whatever you want. So under the comment asynchronous function, asynchronous function, here we go. Let's do const get suggestions equals async that. All right, uh, I keep hitting save. All right, now we have that. Inside of the get suggestions, const word query, word query equals input field dot value. So let's just understand what's going on here. Input field dot value. That is taking, I'm pretty sure is this. I, I can't see the HTML. How do I see the HTML? I want to see the H, whatever. I'm pretty sure that's this thing and it's pulling the, whatever I put inside of it. And it's taking the value and utilizing it, okay? Let's create another const variable. I hate how they call them variables, it's a constant. Const and point equals the string that is URL and query params. URL plus query params plus word query. So the whole point of this is to, um, is that correct? Yeah. So the whole point of this is to make a get request using these question mark query params. So, pardon me for yawning. Basically, if you go to Google and you type, I don't know, this Codecademy, we'll just see what that is. You'll see this question mark, search equals Q, that's probably your query, equals Codecademy. And then you have a bunch of key value pairs separated by these ampersands. Am ampersand, ampersand, whatever. You understand the point. But you start with a question mark, and then each key value pair is just, you have your key equals value and key equals value. So those are search parameters, okay? In this specific instance, it's they're calling it query parameters because you're querying for something. So that's basically how you can use get requests. There are a lot of things that you can add on to this. I wonder if there's some more, whoops. Let's go to bootstrap. I'll show you a little bit more, bootstrap.com. Let's read the docs and let's go somewhere, okay. So if I, there we go. So now you can see I have my URL and I have this uh, pound, how they work. And the whole point of that is to find somewhere on the page an element with an ID of how they work. So this should be, yep. This element, this uh, title element right here is how they work. And that's what this thing is finding for and it'll automatically scroll for you. This is a really big benefit of the backend or server side rendering is they just uh, the the it's really good for this kind of thing um actually just it's good to structure your html that way because then you can do this and it'll automatically read and automatically scroll there there's a lot of really cool things that are very helpful all right create another const variable i think i did that yep Add a try statement, okay. Try catch with an error, okay. And I'm gonna just log the error, console.log error. And then outside the code block for try, let's do that, okay. Inside the try, do const response equals await fetch. And then I'm going to endpoint 
And I don't think... Oh, I do need no cash. All right. Cash. No cash. All right. Run. What was wrong with that? Response. Await. Fetch. Endpoint. Called endpoint and cache as its arguments. That's what I did. That's that's literally exactly what I just did. But it probably doesn't like the comma. Yeah. In I like to put commas at the end of my arrays and objects and stuff, even if I don't have another thing, just because of git. It's good for um good for git stuff. So you'll understand that later. Excuse me. Blow the response variable on the previous step. Check that the value is okay. If response dot okay. Inside the code block. Inside the code block of the conditional statement await response.json. Okay. Got to await. There we go. Still inside the conditional statement, call the function render response and pass in JSON response. Render response, JSON response. And there we go. So test, submit. There we go. So the whole point of this, I don't really like how they didn't, we didn't go over like, how to add the actual listener. This just goes into how to create a request. But basically how this works, you have these helper functions. Let's see what this is. Render response. All that does is create a list. Great, that's fantastic. Render raw response. That's just, okay, that makes sense. Render JSON response. And it does it inside of a little code block. Great. I don't really care about any of that. So basically how this works is it'll add an event listener to the submit button, which is this button right here, which is right here. And once you click on that, it'll run display suggestions, okay? And it'll run event.preventDefault. And then while response field first child, it'll remove that child. Okay, that makes sense. And of course, they don't put a semicolon there. And then after that, it'll run get suggestions, which is what this guy is. And once that is done, it'll run, to run render response. And you can see render response right here. Okay. And evidently, there are two other functions. So let's just see what those do. Let's do render JSON response. Okay. And it's just an array of. 82 items, that's cool. And then what is the other one? There was render raw response. Does nothing. Hmm, interesting. So those are functions that do different things. And if you wanna read through them, you can, but that's just the output. I think it's just taking the uh, JSON and making it look better or uh, making it visible so you can see what actually is being received. And the render response is just how to like how they parse what they their object is. OK, so this JSON response is not the general response that like it. It'll be structured however the server structures it. OK, it's not a consistent structure. 
So personally, I don't like using Git uh get requests for this. I use uh for for like receiving information like this, I would use a post request. Uh post or no, method is post. And I would just do that and that would handle that's just how I like handling all of my JSON stuff. Get responses, uh, get requests are cached. And so if you like open up a page and then like go to, I don't know, um, let's go to my GitHub, okay? And then I close it and then I do control shift T. The reason why it renders so quickly is because basically all of the get requests were cached. And I ran into this problem earlier, like a couple of years ago where I wasn't actually able to render my page because it was opening the last cached response instead of what the actual information is or like what I wanted the like what I wanted the page to be. So personally, I don't like doing this because it can run you can run into issues and I think that's what this no cache is, but the fact that you have to explicitly state that is really annoying. And I prefer post requests because that you are receiving information, you are not caching it. I want that information to not uh, be determined by the local state. I want that information to be stateless, if that makes sense. So, um, get requests. Oh yeah, I guess I talked about post requests, but I will do that in the next video.